Hi guys, welcome to another interesting episode of Trash It, okay? So today we've got a few people um, in the house, but before we introduce the people we have, we're going to be talking about sex in marriage, okay? Because I know a lot of people out there are worried about what they can and cannot do when they're married, they're Christians or they're Muslims. I suppose our Muslim brothers and sisters might be having the same issues or might be thinking the same thing. So today we're kind of here to talk about what's allowed and what isn't allowed or what, what what's comfortable for you to do and what isn't. And in the house, we have Toyin back with us. And Toyin is an author, okay? She's written a book called The Adam and Eve Phenomenon, The Forbidden Fruit, okay? And that basically talks about sex in general. So she's going to be giving us some, you know, inside knowledge about sex, marriage, and all of that. And again, we've got um, Chinelo in the house. Chinelo, thanks for coming back to the show. It's lovely to have you. And then we've got Jude as well. Jude, again, thanks for being back on the show. And you've got your usual madame, I call her, and that's Yori. Okay, so basically, um, we had a fan write to us to say, um, so I'm married and my husband wants me to perform some sexual acts, okay? But I'm not very comfortable performing this act. Not that the Bible particularly says anything to condemn it, because she hasn't seen where the Bible says anything to condemn those sexual acts. But she just feels like morally and as a Christian, those are not the sort of things that she wants to be doing. But then her husband has said, but King Solomon and King David in the Bible had mo loads and loads of wives and concubines and what have you. And surely at some point he must have had sex with them at the same time, which in modern day is called a threesome or foursome or an orgy. So the husband is saying, if King Solomon and King David could do it, right? Why can't I, we're legally married in the eyes of God and in the eyes of man, why can't you give me what I want? Okay, so we just want to know, you know, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable, what's going to take you into hellfire if there's, you know, if so to speak. So Tony, let's hear from you first because you're an expert in this. <laughs> hi, hi everyone. It's nice to be on the show once again. Thanks, Cici and Yuri, for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I love the fact that you guys talk about things. You make it real and relatable, and I think that's important in in our generation, basically. Um, yeah. So about sex. Um, <laughs> it's funny you call me an expert, but anyway, <laughs> I, I was just inspired. I am. Um, uh, because I'm a youth leader, a youth pastor, a pastor of a ministry, I, I feel like there's an obligation on me to talk about the things that are coded as forbidden in the church. And that was, that was the reason why I brought out the book to speak. It actually targets different people, different audiences, but it was actually written because I began to have very interesting conversations with young people about sex. And they were of the notion that they were not supposed to talk about sex, they were not supposed to have sex, but we'll come back to that. And even when they were legally allowed to have sex, there were supposed to be boundaries. And that was why I wrote the book on sex. In marriage, now I have to start by saying that sex was given for three reasons in marriage. And we'll find this in the book of Genesis and Ephesians. It was given for communication. When you love someone, you communicate with body, soul, and spirit because we're tripod beings. Okay. So you communicate with your body and it's the entwining of the bodies that brings about sex. So when you love someone, you communicate. It was also given for creation. Really, I'll put it as procreation because the only way you can make, populate the world, which is one of our five mandates, you know, have dominion is that you actually have sex so you can have babies. So yeah. it was given for communication so that the body can communicate what the heart is feeling. And secondly, it was given for um, creation. And thirdly, it was given for communion. Believe it or not, marriage is symbolic of the church. The Bible calls the church the bride. And I don't want to preach. I'm just trying to make somebody understand that it is legally allowed in the Christian dom, in our faith, to have sex. Thank and you. sexless marriage is a finished marriage. It was finished before it even started, if you guys ain't having sex. And I've had to teach in some other places, I'm going to round up here so somebody else can say something, that um, even in the secular, a judge was once told um, by a couple that they wanted to have a divorce, and, the, and they had only been recently married, married. And the judge asked them, have you consummated the marriage? And they asked, what does that mean? He said, well, basically, have you had sex? 
And they said, oh, no, we haven't. Then he said, in legal terms, it is not a divorce. It is an annulment. What do I mean? Mm -hmm. When you have mm -hmm. sex with someone, you marry them, which is why I'm passionate about preaching, about sex. I'm a purity preacher. Every sissy knows me. I preach at every singles uh, event, whatever. I preach purity. I stand by it. I married as a virgin, and I still stand by those values. Having said that, I can speak in any forum at all, you know, with regards to sex, where, wherever it is you want to speak, speak about. So basically what I'm saying is it was given for communication, for, for creation, and for communion. So basically it represents the church. We are the bride of Christ, and sex must happen in marriage for it to be a marriage okay. if it is not there is no sex it is not a divorce it's an annulment just go your separate ways okay we respect you thank yes. you uh, yeah and then I, I i don't know if i answered the question about what's allowed or what's not permitted no but we're, sure we're going to come back there don't worry that one we're going to dig deep into Absolutely. that jude Absolutely. what what do you think about do you think as a married couple there are some things that you should or shouldn't do you know, with this woman, with how she's feeling, what do you think? Is she right in her feelings to think morally, all these things that my husband is telling me to do? I know we're married, but no, I don't want to do them because they might not be right in the sight of God. What do you think? Uh, first of all, I'm just going to say it's nice to be back on the show. Uh, hi, viewers. Well, I'm going to be a bit controversial here. And, uh, Go ahead. <laughs> so I'm the controversialist. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, first of all, I really didn't get the point uh, the idea of what the husband that wanted her to do he just said wanted me to perform was the husband asking for threesome or well we you need to, get you to right it. now right mm -hmm. now what you need to just answer is yeah as mm -hmm. a married woman is there anything mm -hmm. that or as a married woman or a man is there anything mm -hmm. that your partner would ask you that you would refuse to do without even maybe uh, trying it first so i don't okay. I, I will go into the things that he wanted her to do but okay. just just on that yeah going back to what i said earlier i want to be a bit controversial i don't think uh uh morality is even com coming to sex when it involves me and my partner mm -hmm. that is our business it's got nothing to do with god it's got nothing to do with religion or any societal norms all of this all of these structures were put in place for checks and balances just to check the check the balances of people like david and solomon that's why people put it in place. In the country where we are, I guess I'm, I'm just speaking, I'm hoping that every one of us is in London at present. Mm, if you yeah. see why they brought all of that marriage, one man, one wife, sex, and all of that within mm. the marriage, it was just because of the aristocrats who were just like having mistresses left, right, center, causing problems with uh, 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 inheritances. But for me, it's nobody's decision. We talk about it. I've asked my wife before, let's do this or that. And she wasn't comfortable about it because she's never tried it before. I let it be. But I think it's just our own business. It's got nothing to do with God, religion, or otherwise. Okay, so so even though she's feeling uncomfortable about this, Chinelo, what do you think? Even though she's feeling about uncomfortable, she'll still, still try and, and meet the needs of her husband? or You know, uh, I'm going to address uh, one of the things that um, Tony raised about communication. You know, that's one of the reasons for sex is communication. And um, I want, uh, I just want the audience to know that we have positive and negative communication. So it's just for the woman to know what exactly are you trying to communicate. Yeah. And for, for Tony to preach about purity and to preach about, you know, being a virgin before you marry, you're only going to communicate what you know. So being a virgin and, you know, talking about purity, that means the woman would have limited knowledge about sex. Because as a Christian, you're not allowed to think about it. You're not even allowed to think about it, not, not to talk of, to practice it before marriage. Mm -hmm. So now when it comes down to that, it's going to be a problem in that marriage if somebody is going into that marriage as a virgin who has no experience of sex and then you're saying that you're going into that marriage with the with the uh, uh, idea of communication between you and your husband through sex is going to be flawed that's my opinion in the sense that you can only communicate what you know He's, if you can't start feeling things just like that if you haven't read about it or you haven't practiced it or you haven't seen people do it or you haven't you know that sort of thing mm -hmm. so that's the angle i'm coming in as for saying what you can do and what you cannot do that be right in the marriage it comes down to that communication as well now when you are in a marriage and the man wants this woman to do all these kinds of things now we're, we're narrowing it down to culture because now we're we're africans we yeah. have culture Apart from religion, 
we also talk about culture and how a woman should present themselves in their husband's home. Now, if you know how mothers-in-law are, like in my place, if you're, I'm from Imo State, and we have Anambra people thinking, the mothers in Anambra don't want their sons to marry women from Imo State because they think that these women are more experienced about sex. Because the men always talk about the women being able to satisfy a man. So now the mothers-in-law don't want their sons to marry from that state because they believe that these women are wild. Because why should you have so much experience about sex? Now, that's one thing. Now, if, a woman, if this man is asking this woman to do all these things in that marriage, and let's say the woman just you know, tries to uh, move away from her boundaries and tries to do all yeah. these things, trust me, when there's a quarrel in the house, the man is going to turn around and say, oh, after all, you, you, you might be a prostitute because you've practiced the way you practiced all these things. Are you sure it's just for me or you've been wow. doing it with other people? Yeah, so we have to really think about all these things. The way the woman is presenting herself before the marriage, and now you're in the marriage, because usually we want to, women tend to, from my own side of the culture, we tend to pretend to be innocent mm -hmm. when we're going into a marriage. Now it becomes a hindrance. When you're in that marriage, now you want to start exhibiting all these acrobatic kinds <laughs> of <laughs> so now he, 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 the, the, man, the man will begin to view you from another angle to say, okay oh. okay so, Yuri, yeah. i'm gonna let you just have a quick <laughs> word about this quickly before we jump to the to the act that she didn't want to perform okay well i'm gonna keep it um short and cute mm -hmm. i grew up in a christian background and i think what tends to happen or what i'm hoping in this lady's um circumstances is that maybe she's a little bit naive the husband requires patience mm -hmm. okay so you can't take someone that is brand new and someone that's random out on a race one would definitely tire so i know with the kenyans they have a like a sex educator that works with young wives or brand new brides mm -hmm. to let them test their their, their balances around sex so if their mm -hmm. husband is asking them for this and they've never done it. So they have someone that will say, well, it's not the end. As long as he's not asking you to sleep with an animal, I don't see what the issue is. As long as you can do it the, within the confines of your, of, your, of your bedroom or where you feel comfortable to have sex and there's no third party involved. So education on the part of the husband to this wife. As a Christian, we've been told you probably can't have people a blowjob, you can't do um, doggy style. These are things that some Christian sects would have preached against. Mm -hmm. So if that's what the husband wants her to do, as long as he doesn't bother them on demeaning sex act, I don't see what the issue is here. It's just about educating the, the, the bride or the wife. Like, look, these are things I've done and I've enjoyed and I can help you get there. Women were very, very, um, very naive when it comes to reaching our own um, sexual enjoyment so to okay. say yeah and that's just my take on it okay so now let's move on to the sexual act that this that this man wanted right i'll come back to one of the points chinela made earlier because she said if the woman if, obviously in christianity um i suppose maybe in islam as well it says no sex before married bed undefiled right i don't know if that's the new Te old testament or the new testament because i don't know which one testament. Oh, is that that's New Testament? Huh? Okay, so we are we are doomed. So basically, New Testament had a lot of things happening. He it, had a lot. It did, didn't it? So now the thing is, because Chino Lim made a point and said, so you're saying that sex is for communication, but if the woman has never had sex before because she's a Christian or Muslim or whatever and is bed on defiled, so what is she going to be communicating? Because she doesn't have any skills. She doesn't. She, she's not. You know, she doesn't have any experience in it. So she's just going to come in as okay here i am what do you want to do but anyway let's go to the to the sexual acts that the man was requesting for so the man is into um 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 role play okay the man is into role play and the man wanted the wife to do certain things number one he wanted a blow job right um oral sex okay okay and um, so obviously the woman didn't feel comfortable doing that because she's like okay well no i can't do that because that is the mouth I use in praising God. That is the I speak in tongues, you know. So no, I can't be doing the same thing with my mouth and then the next day be praising God with the same mouth. It doesn't, it, 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 morally for me, it doesn't sound right. Another thing the man wanted, he wanted her to spank him, okay? Um, and again, the woman was like, ah, ah, 
But you are my you are my Lord and my God. You are my husband. So now you want me to be beating you with a cane. I don't understand what you're trying to enjoy from this. Because obviously, as Africans, these are the things that you, you'll be like, wow, okay, does that even happen? Did our parents do that? So that was another thing that she wasn't um, comfortable in doing, okay? So how do we, and how do we negotiate things like that? How do we, as a married couple, as a married woman, for example, if your husband wants something like that, what do you do? How do you compromise? And there's anal as well, which was something else he wanted. And she wasn't comfortable with doing that. And she wasn't even willing to try it. So, so what do you think? Tony, Are you throwing the question out? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Tony, oh, he's right. <laughs> All right, so I didn't realize you came back to me. Thank you. Thanks for everyone's opinions. I have to put it out here as well. And thanks for this, um, you know, the, the platform to be able to give different and differing opinions. I have to make it clear that our opinions are based. There is no way you would speak. Everyone here and everyone who speaks on platforms, you speak from a knowledge base and also a value base. So we have to understand that we speak from a place of our value, what we feel is important to us, whether your value comes from your faith or your value comes from your education or your value just comes from principles basically we all speak yeah. from a place of value so i have to put it out there that i'm speaking from the place of my value and my value is strictly the word of god and it's not just the word of god but also based on my educational background i'm a healthcare professional i've had seven years of experience within medicine so i also speak from those backgrounds so to help you understand where i'm coming from i have to address the first thing that um cc mentioned about you need to have sex to be able to be experienced which was what you picked up from what Chinelo said and I'm glad you mentioned that and it's important because I because I'm a youth um, 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 a, a, a pastor I have to make it clear to the young people who are viewing this mm. Ex, um, um, having sex so much sex before marriage does not make you an expert it just makes you used please mm -hmm. listen Okay. Having a lot of sex before marriage does not make you a professional. Your husband is not looking for a professional. So I need you to understand that going about to have sex, when, when, when you study nursing in school or medicine in school, and you want to help that woman give birth as a gynecologist, the woman who's, have, who's pregnant doesn't say, how many babies have you had yourself? No. So it's not about how many times you have done it, but how much knowledge you have about it. And I think it's important that we put that out there for you to understand what you're putting yourself. Having sex before marriage or having a lot of it does not make you good at sex. It just makes can you I, good. Can I come okay. in? Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I, can I, I come first briefly? Before. Okay, yeah, Julian, no, come in just quickly. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned about, you know, nursing. Um, well, what you said wasn't exactly what I was saying. I expected to hear something else. But then, um, if we liken it, if we try to liken you know about sex and pregnancy and all that if you um being a nurse and all that remember when you're doing that nursing program you go through you know you go through um training, training. and that training placement is part of it so you understand so you're doing a placement where you're able to have a test of what it is before you get into the main job so now at the end of the day if you're preaching all about purity and all that you know there is no do you have okay let me put it as a question do you have a training ground for these people <laughs> to be able to prepare them for marriage and what they are going okay. to expect because mm -hmm. you can't okay. let them into a marriage and you expect her to do all those blow jobs and all those stuff that she doesn't know yeah because about. you know you know the thing is just a quick one to before you answer you know with the with blow job if, if there's a, you have to ha know the technique you can't just exactly. do it like that exactly. so how how does it work i mean do, do you agree <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 with, yeah, with, with oral sex, I know that I, I was expecting what uh, uh, Tony was going to talk about maybe diseases that's related to it. That's yeah, she was, she, I am going to, I yeah. haven't even spoken about but, but, it. Yeah. No, let's wait for Tony to, to, nail, to nail this. Yeah, Jude, I mean, just one it. sentence from Jude real quick before okay, we go yeah. back to Tony. Yeah, I don't know if, if, I, if I should call it technique. Yeah, but some people don't do it properly. Some do it where you like it. People have different styles. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that later. Tony, let's go back yeah. to you. Yeah, so I'll just lay the foundation on what you said. I'm just saying that practice before marriage does not make you, God, you, God doesn't put you in marriage, in a place of marriage. Again, from a value base, because you're a professional at sex. No, it does not make you an expert. Again, it just makes you used. You've just gone on about the place just to test different waters. It does not make you good at it. That's what I, that was the point I was trying to make. I haven't talked about sex in itself and the act. That was just laying a foundation to the point CC made. And in the place of marriage, I mean, I, I think I need to, I also need to, because um, Chinelo mentioned about going on placement. Your body is a temple, and I think it's about time we begin to put value added tax, VAT, on our bodies. Your body is not meant to be a 
placement before before you actually live with the person you're going to live for the rest of your life that does not add value to you and i think it's important we mention that that your body is not so it's a temple and mm -hmm. how you treat a temple is how you're meant to treat your body it's not for placement your knowledge base should be enough for your marriage secondly Sorry. in marriage as i said was it's about communication and communicating love and i'm glad chinelo said that there was a um, negative communication and positive that's a very good point actually i really like that now in marriage the the bible is silent about a few things okay and as much as the bible is not silent about marriage and sex it does not give the specifications or prescriptions about sex in marriage and i think it's something that jude said actually struck me when he said what i do with my wife is my private business actually sex is your private business it is true it is your private business but from a value-based point on that scriptures you have been put together with that man with one man the bible says one man one wife which is why i'm going to use the next point to to to, to, to um, illustrate my point because it's one man one wife and i think um, um yori actually made a point that in the old testament there were a lot of things that were permissible not necessarily because they were edifiable so david had a thousand wives that he was sleeping with every day that's not what the new testament christian is supposed to do the new um, um new testament realities is that it's one man one wife which right. means god is not interested in you bringing threes and foursomes and fivesomes into that union it is to symbolize god and the church so it is one man one person in your marital bed i i think i need to stress that point in from a value point base the second thing about sex it is a private matter if it is private then three becomes a crowd i repeat mm. three becomes a crowd so i am definitely not in support of threesomes of whatever kind that's the first thing now the second thing about it also is because the bible is not specific and prescriptive about the types of acts i can only say again from both a medical and a scriptural point of point of view now for anal sex i have had to treat people who obviously i'm not here to, to come against anyone's sexual preferences yeah. or proclivities yeah but people who have been involved because of their sexual proclivities been involved in anal sex for years and years because that's the only way they can have sex because they are either of same gender or that's their proclivity they have had to because what happens at the anal sphincter when you have anal sex is that it is a sphincter it performs as a rubber band an elastic it has its elastic limits the anus only allows things out not allow things in and so what happens when you begin to push things into the anal cavity is that you know elastic limits in physics i'm a science student is that it begins to push until it reaches its limits now the anal cavity that's meant to look like this sorry for the graphics now begins oh, to open it. up each time uh -huh. you open up for anal sex and by the time it gets to this point the anal sphincter is meant to contract like the womb and release mm -hmm. contract and release when you go to poo what happens when you keep having sex is that you're not allowing the brain to send hormones to create a contraction and a relaxation it, re it re remains permanently relaxed and i have to put it out there for those of you having anal sex permanently usually continually you will be incontinent if you don't want to wear pads in the later time of your life <laughs> you to stop right now okay well, you guys, I I better put wait, out there, guys, wait. Again, it's not mentioned or prescriptive in scripture, but common sense and education dictates that you apply some of this logic to what you're doing in sex. So okay. it is your proclivity and your sexuality, but be educated. Okay, Tori, can I just quickly ask, okay, I, I, I'm loving what you're saying because this is very educative as well for people who want to be experimenting without understanding. Now, the, the, um, apparently the male G point is somewhere inside that um, in us, okay? So now, how are they going to ever experience that G point if they don't visit that place? How, how is it going to work? Now, the G point you're referring to is actually placed in the perineum. Please mm -hmm. listen, even for ladies. Mm. It's the perineum. It is the space in between the anus and the vagina or the space between the anus and the penis. You, yes. you have a lot of things to actually experiment and play with if you like me being graphic, okay? Because I know that mm -hmm. some pastors who are going to watch this are probably going to blush. Cece, I don't know why you did this to me. But anyway, Sorry. let's go back. <laughs> I so warned you. Between, <laughs> it's, I wear many hats, so this is cool with me. Now, now, it's between it's, the gist is actually by the it's located by the perineum which is the space you have between your vagina or the or the anus or and the anus or the penis and the anus you don't need to go through pools to touch the penis when people have prostate cancer they palpate the doctor palpates by the penis 
the balls, okay, the testicles, and goes to the perineum. He doesn't need to go into your anus except there's a reason for maybe the digestive issue or an excretory problem where we have to go in there with our index finger just to check. And the index finger is so small that it does not cause a permanent, you know, um, 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 uh, um, elastic limit to be stretched. It's okay. just a finger in and a finger out. Okay, so Tony, are you saying that, right? You can reach that G spot without necessarily going putting anything inside the anus. That's right. Okay. That's what so, I'm trying to say. Okay, so since you're saying the index finger is just big enough, so are you saying it's okay for people to use the index finger for anal sex or no? Okay. No. No, no, no. The um, index think, finger. Anyway, for those who even require anal sex to actually get somewhere, the finger will do nothing for you. So that would not even be an option. Okay. So, but the finger is actually put in there for medical reasons. For medical reasons, and it's actually to touch poo. Can you imagine? That's the only reason why it's not mm. there to give any form of pleasure. In all honesty, it is uncomfortable. So that's why we have to use we use KY jelly in a hospital to actually check and make those examinations. Exam Examination is not a pleasure, for goodness sakes. It sends different kinds of hormones when you're in the hospital. It sends different kinds of hormones and, and to, to your system, enzymes that release either, you know, uncomfortable um, sensations or, you know, just let me get through this. So I, I really don't know. That's why I said that people who are of the, the proclivities of sexual preferences where anal sex is the only way, this suggests to you that it is not the way because it is not an entry point. It's an exit point. And when you cause an anomaly in what God has created in its originality what you cause is confusion sickness disease and you prone it you are at risk of so many um, um anal and bowel disorders without okay. even trying just okay. by doing that can i okay. come in yes come in you know you know what um i i think that um toy is um educating us more of and it's, it's taking the flavor a bit away from you know the main topic that we're talking about for some people because there are so many people who don't have this level of knowledge or level of understanding about all that Tony is describing because she's going about in-depth biology about you know the human body and all that i want us to narrow it down to for me that's what i feel that will bring back the flavor to the discussion in the sense that okay what are the things that uh, like you know the question demands for us to answer about um what you know what is right and what is wrong in in sex in marriage at the end of the day i will not condemn whatever anybody chooses because from what Tony has said this bible is silent about sex and what you do in your home so i'm taking it that even now sex is not a sin because the bible is silent about it but the thing is we don't have this level of mindfulness when you know during that sex act and what i mean is that you don't start thinking about the biological um uh, um yeah, aspect yeah. Of the consequences, you don't start thinking yeah. about the damage to your organs you just want that pleasure you want it to be pleasurable to satisfy you at that point where you're trying to enjoy the sex and then you can deal with the aftermath you know so um that's what i want us to to think about you know in the sense that okay while you're having this sex with your partner and your partner is asking you to do all these kinds of things and you're asking whether it's right or wrong so i'm believing that we're clear that there is no right or wrong in having sex or whatever your partner tells you because the bible is silent on it so you, that that means that's that's the loophole where we can do whatever we like practice anyhow we like mm -hmm. but as Tori said just between the man and the woman. Okay, so Gina, look, can I ask let you me, some questions? Me, I'm sorry. Yeah, can sorry. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm yeah, gonna go come on, in yeah, for go a on. Yeah. Okay. The thing about and thank, thank you, Tony. Actually, I enjoy that because we see now we know what's happening with Celia and Jude with their hand signs. I can't keep up. Now, <laughs> <laughs> personally, I don't. I don't have an issue with anyone that chooses to be very creative with sex. Mm -hmm. Anal sex, whether Bible forbids it or not, is painful as hell. Mm -hmm. So if anyone, yeah, honestly, we just have to be honest here. And she's like, it's, that area is not for things to go in. But what I'm trying to get is, wh whatever you're asking your partner to do sexually, are you able to receive that same treatment? Because there's no way you're asking me for anal sex that I can't poke you that way too. So if you're willing to poke me that way, then I should be able to poke you that way. You, you can't be, it's a two-way street if it's communication. As I'm giving, I should be able to receive. So 
for partner's husband. Don't ask me for what you're not willing for me to do to your body. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't. Because then it becomes as if I'm only satisfying you. I'm not, I'm not getting satisfied. The other things that we can do as a couple is understanding a love language. Okay. You so you don't want to go. You know, what, if, what if it's okay with you to poke him in the anus and he pokes you in the anus? Is that something you were still <laughs> are willing to explore? What if he said, okay, yeah, let's be poked. Let's get poking. Well, I'll be worried if he wants me to poke him, though, because of my own moral compass. It's not something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like I said, anal sex is, excuse my friend, it's freaking painful. Okay. Is so that, you, yeah, so, Jude, let me come to you, Jude, because you have been very quiet in all of this. Because I know you you came to the studio one time and you and you said, you know, your fetish is the foot and things like that, right? Am I, I wrong? Can't, you said I it. Can't the footage. Yeah, okay. I can't so, the footage. so let's explore that. So what would you what sort of things would you do since your fetish is the foot? How what do you do with the foot? Let's let's hear you. What would I do with the what? What would you the do with your food. wife's foot, for example? Because oh, you said I that's your fetish. I only, just, I only just kiss it and suck it with my mouth. That's how I do. But, but don't spit anything out. <laughs> no, no, I'm trying not to. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Before before I go forward on that, I just wanted to say uh, the the uh, the opinion that Tony gave with regards to the biological aspect of things is was really 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 important that she said it. Very informative because whether we like it or not, if we keep doing these things, we will end up in the hospital. And Tony will be there behind us. I told you so. Examining every time. Not behind, you, behind me. <laughs> because I, if you saw the dailies yesterday, there was a young lady who had a vibrator that exploded in a private I party. saw that. Oh my, yeah, the battery that. went off. Yeah, she's always known how to insert that. And he exploded and she's caused some damage to herself. I didn't read the whole story. I just saw the head of that. Whoa. So you can see where Tony is coming from. Oh, but yeah. said, uh, 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 you already touched on something very important. And that's it. this is the only time I want to be scriptural. I say, do unto others what you want them to do to yourself. Like uh, Chinelo said, when you're in this mood of sex in the bedroom with your partner, you're, you're just there not thinking about the morality boundaries. Mm -hmm. I know, so I've asked my, my wife, I said, hey, can we do anal? And she asked this question, would you like it done to you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. nope. And, that's <laughs> yeah. so that's and that was the end of it. But with the food, what I do with the food is just use, because look, sex for some of us is just about penetration. When you don't do all of that, other so it becomes just penetration. You can try all the styles: doggy, the sixty-nine, the thirty-six, the invert, the controversial one, the acrobatic, the kitchen, the park. <laughs> it becomes boring sometimes, so you just need to spice things up. So, with the tongue, I just go and just suck the food or lick the food. Just play, lick the legs. That's what I do. Just okay. to be. Thanks, Jude, for sharing that. I know those things are very private to you, Chinelo. So, when it comes to things like spanking and all of that and maybe, you know, um, oral sex. Is that something you're willing to do for your partner? Or are you going to go with Yuri? If I do it to you, you do it to me. How, how, what's your take on that? Let me make this clear, you know. Uh, uh, I'm not in agreement with uh, Yuri that marriage is give and take. You know, give, you must give back what you take. I think it just has to do with what you like and you're trying to satisfy your partner. So at the end of the day, you know, no, love is all about giving, not about taking. So at some point, you might just want to satisfy your, your husband or your wife mm -hmm. without getting anything in return. I know some people who want this woman or this man to be happy, so they are willing to do anything. So when it comes down to, when it becomes a combat of, if I give you, are you going to give me back? I think it becomes like a combat and a fight, and a fight might come up. So, but for me, I would say that in, in, in like, you know, uh, to answer Celia's question, mm -hmm. when it comes to you being married to this man and you have some sense of morality to maintain, some values to protect, there are things that you wouldn't want to express because you're limited. This is where you've portrayed yourself to this man from the beginning. I'm a Christian, I'm dead. Can imagine after doing all these things, I come out and start speaking in tongues, you know? I don't know what the man would say. Like, oh, oh you're doing anything. all these things. You're a different person at night and you're a different person in the morning. So what I'm trying to say is that I am not going, whatever, the way I started the marriage, I think that's the way I'll continue with. We can experiment a bit, but I'm mm -hmm. not going to go into all that gory and all those bizarre kinds of things. Because so I what, start 
So uh, why did he ask you, Chinelo? Oh. Wouldn't you do it? Because from what I'm getting from what you're saying, you're kind of saying that you 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 um, portrayed yourself as a Christian girl before you got married, and you want to keep that up. But I think that as a as a married couple, you should be able to let your guard down and and do what you feel. You know, you don't have to be thinking, oh, I want him to still sing. Yeah, like but at girl. what detriment? At what detriment? Tomorrow the man might start thinking, oh, maybe you well, were. Well, he should be thinking like that, that though. He should. Because have... how do you know when when people are fighting, everybody wants to win, so they throw everybody throws their dagger. It depends so, on how long so the dagger is. So if he's the one that asked for it, maybe he asked you to spank him. Wouldn't you do it, given that he's the I one would, that asked for I it? I wouldn't do that. I'm. Sorry, I can do it to a boyfriend because I have nothing to lose if I do it to a boyfriend. Yeah, but that's true. With a boyfriend, you can ex you can express yourself. You can do all because you know. Well, this is not leading to anything. But with a husband, I mean, you need to put some. Can I come in? Can I come in, Chinelo, are you not supposed to be free with your husband? Because this is someone that you owe your vows to. And I, I'm seriously asking you because this is where you're yeah. supposed to be free. Your marriage, yeah. yeah, but but that's not the case because okay. you're, you're 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 thinking about your values. Remember, Tony was telling us about your personal values that you have. Now, at the end of the day, you're thinking about how to protect because you started out as a good girl in this marriage, good girl in quotes, and you want to maintain that. So I'm not saying you're not free, but you can't. So you, you have to, especially another thing is that you have to understand the kind of person your husband is. If it is the one that is very, very verbally abusive. So you have to check yourself in some things because you know that this might come back to haunt you. So you have to be very careful in what you do and how you portray yourself. Okay. So for me, in marriage, I believe the way you started out, if you cannot maintain it, you better show him from the beginning that you are this wild and open girl that can do anything. So right, like, okay. okay. You know, okay, so well, Jude, I know you have a lot to say. Okay, so let's hear from you real quick. What is it that you want to say about this topic, about sex in marriage? Let's hear from you. I, I think, uh, like I uh, uh, earlier said, it's, it is a private matter between the both partners, whether man or man or woman or woman or man and a woman. Having said that, when it comes to the matters of sex, if one of the uh, couple is not comfortable with it, they should talk about it. It's about that communication as well. But there should never be an external factor just hovering around it, whether it be religion or, or pastors or church or mosque or bringing a third person in there. It is your private matter. So you should be able to discuss it. For me, we do discuss it. And uh, if one of us is not comfortable with it, I'm open for everything. I just, I, that sort of person, I want to uh, explore. But there's, there's a danger to all of this that, and we must not hide or shy away from reality. We've mm -hmm. seen a lot, of, uh, a lot of couples break apart because of this subject matter. When one of them is not, one of them feel very unfulfilled in it, and they go yeah. seek it outside, and they get it outside, you know? So we, and again, another thing I wanted to really stress out, Nobody should see sex as anything demeaning. Don't see that as a, a do whatever you do, it is your business. Don't come out of it and feel, oh, God will not answer my prayer. It's not about mm -hmm. God, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. Don't ever, it is a fulfilling act. Don't ever see yourself as, oh, by God, what have I done? I, I, I gave a blowjob, I gave oral sex. I am a fan of oral sex. It's, if you don't give, I'm a giver. If you don't give me, I give you anyway, because it's about mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If you're not dancing, it is your business. I'm okay, why not? Jude, let me come to you real quick. So you, you said just now that, um, you know, that you're into feet and all of that and, all, you know, you like it. So now let's say your wife says no. She says, no, don't, don't touch my feet. Don't suck on my feet. I don't like that. What's wrong with you? Get off. Yeah? But obviously that's your fantasy. But now she, you can't fulfill it with her because she doesn't like it. it, it the mere thought of it just makes her body cringe. Now, what do you do? Because you know fantasies, most times you want to fulfill them. So how do you now fulfill the fantasy that's that you have very, if your wife says no? That's a very, very important and valid question. And yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm, I'm perfect. Yeah. Fantasies can really drag you for a yeah. long term. And mm. if you just begin to think I'm unfulfilled. And I tell you, the avenue to let that out is to have it outside. I tell you the truth. And it, there's different forms. I'm not going to lie here. Yeah. It can be through starting to watch porn or just having it with somebody else. I tell yeah. you, that's that's. Have that's you hard. okay? So for you, you would say you're lucky. You've not had. You've not fallen into that situation because I've not uh, said I'm, I've never. I've not said I was lucky or I'm lucky. Oh. I've told you, I've just told you that's the hold he's got. He's very strong, and I'm not going to go and say, uh, okay, this is what I've done. But I've just told you, and you can make 
whatever you want to make out of that. Assumption. I've just told you, I'm not saying I'm lucky that it's not happened. I'm just saying it's got a stronghold and you then want to let it out. Okay. So out I, I, think that's, that's, I think all this fantasy business is another thing we're going to trash on its own. Toyin, okay. I'm going to come to you, right? You said something earlier and you said, well, at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the anus is only for exit and not entry. And then, but you guys, when you, when someone comes to the hospital, you do your examination with the index finger and all of that. And then I asked you and I was like, well, perhaps the index finger is enough for some people. And you said, no, it doesn't give you the kind of stimulation that you want. How do you know that that index finger cannot give the kind of stimulation that the person wants? It might just, it might, have you, have you, is this something, are you talking out of experience or you don't just merely just. <laughs> Like, like Jude, I love the fact that Jude is so diplomatic. Now, diplomacy is not my strongest point. So I, I don't know if you deny or not deny. It's, it's very good for politicians. They say a whole lot of something by saying nothing Say nothing. All. Okay, so but I'm, I'm, I'm not as diplomatic as Jude. So you will definitely know what I've done and what I haven't done. Right. Uh, that is one thing I will not be doing at all. Having said that, the reason I said about the finger is that from people who derive such kind of pleasure, I mean, you do know that the finger just goes in there to palpate and comes out. But what is sex? Sex is about thrust, thrust, thrust. So it is a continuous activity. So that's why I said the finger ain't going to do nothing. So if that's someone continues to put the finger in and out, are you saying that it's going to cause a medical problem? You're going to cause, so let me go, let me go a bit graphic. So a, a lot of times people, um, um, and I like the fact that Yuri actually made a point that women don't have, um, men are supposed to be the, I, I love the give and take concept, by the way, Yuri, that was brilliant. Men are meant to give the penis, which helps penetration. Women don't have a penis. So when you start saying you want anal sex, what am I going to put into you, right? So I like that concept. There's so Mr. Gonna, Rabbit, but I, anyway. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on that. Now the penis I know when I teach this to young people, I say a lot of you have seen the penis in action. It does not mean it has bones. It has no bones, okay? Mm -hmm. It is soft, it is fleshy, and erection is the only thing that makes it harden, okay? Because of an increase of blood flow and hormones. The thing that has nails and has bones, and in the structure that it is made, it will cause more damage than pleasure. Please listen. So it's okay penis, to put the penis in the anus then, since it, it doesn't have any bone. It's just... No, what I mean is that for those who want that sort of, I'm trying to help them. For those who want that sort of uh, pleasure, <laughs> for those who want that sort of pleasure, the finger is probably going to do more damage than good. That is why the penis was created for thrusting. Do you understand? That's what I'm trying to say. Whilst the finger, even in normal sex, like if you, if you, you know, there are different parts of sex, fingering and all of that, you, you do realize you have to be careful, especially when you finger a woman so that you don't cause that. That's what I mean. So okay. the finger is unlikely to cause um, pleasure. That's where I'm going with that. It's unlikely to cause the kind of pleasure you're looking for. Whilst the penis was created in such a way that it's muscle, it's blood flow, it's not bone. So it's unlikely to cause damage along its way of penetration. Okay, so what you're saying is it's better to use the penis in the anus than I am not saying it is better to right. do that. Okay, I'm just trying to... Remember my stand medically and morally is that it is an exit point, not an entry. So I still stand by that. I'm just... Because you threw the question back at me and I know what you're trying to do. Okay. The <laughs> trying to throw the question back at me about the finger. I'm trying to also tell you the medical risks of using the finger. That is why in the medical field we put um, gloves, no. uh, KY jelly and it is a quick in and out so and because you're medically trained you know where to palpate, how to palpate, not to cause damage. Okay. Do you see? So that's yeah. what yeah. The says continue continue, I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Chinelo, I want to come to you. Oh Chinelo is going to you. make me blush on this set I tell you. She's really going to make me blush. I want to, to come out. to you Chinelo. But before I see, so I don't know, I'm just asking. Okay. <laughs> I want to come to you, but before I do, let me just ask Tony one question. So, for example, um, a lady in the church choir or maybe a pastor, uh, even a female pastor, um, it's Saturday night, herself and her husband, they're in bed and they're about to get down and the husband wants a blowjob and the husband wants to ejaculate in her mouth and just be, you know, wild like that. But then the woman is saying, no, please, I'm going to church tomorrow. I'm going to be on the pulpit. I'm going to preach. I'm going to do this. And I, haven't, I will not be thinking of what I did yesterday night and I won't be able to come. So what, what do you think? Do you think it's a good thing? It, what it, do it, I think about oral sex, basically? Oh, yes. No, so, job, um, the, 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 was... in the mouth and all of that. You're going to be squeezing your eye. Yeah, I can see you. <laughs> 
So basically, it, it, there was something Jude that said that struck me again because I tend to listen to people and look and listen to the in betweens. And I like something about what he said when he said sex is not a dirty thing. The, not, the Bible says that everything that God created was good. It doesn't matter what if you think that you know TDJ says something lately. He said whether you think there is a force or there is a God or there is mediation. COVID has made us understand that there is a force bigger than life, bigger than us. You see, we are locked down now. We have no. Yeah. So whether you believe God or not, the fact of the matter is that there is something bigger than you. Mm. So I like some thing that he said he said sex is not dirty and sex is not dirty period because it was created by god how many of you know that everything created by god also has a counterfeit that is why we have external force that's why we have things that go wrong in these places so there are things that can go wrong in sex does not make sex in itself dirty so thanks for saying that truth sex in itself is not dirty having said that oral sex now i spoke about anal sex because i have a, a complete stand on it and i have a medical basis to back that up someone asked me this question on twitter and i think my answer must have gone viral i was only responding this was years ago and this is how i responded again what happens in the bedroom is private and um, this is what i believe again nothing is said in the bible about anal or oral sex though there are parts of song of solomon that he kind of describes in, in, in intricately and intimately so i wouldn't be able to go into the details of that having said that with oral sex please pay attention there's one thing i, I do realize about sex three things i know i speak in degrees and all this consent communication and consequences consent is very important because like yuri said Love is about giving and taking. Love is selflessness. When you go into sex, you don't go for yourself. And I think Jude said something else as well that he doesn't go into it just to pleasure him. It's to pleasure you too. So when we go into sex, consent is very important. What do both of us agree is boundary? in this marriage and on this bed. It's nobody's business. No pastor can tell you what happens, and I know they're not gonna like me for saying this, but no pastor can tell you what happens in your bedroom. What happens in his bedroom? Do you know, mm. it's your yeah. bedroom. You know, somebody when even said office. once, Celia, just to digress a bit, someone even said once, oh, there's some certain music you need to play in your bed. It's your bedroom. I love some nice, clean music that does not necessarily mention holiness, but it's nice and it sets the mood in my bed. That's my bedroom. Amen. And that's what Amen. works in my bed. Amen. So I'm like, I, I'm a bit fly like that, Yuri. You know, I might preach purity and all of that. But I'm sex proud of you, sis. That I actually teach sex therapy. You would not even think that I was holy. Do you understand? Because it's a beautiful thing. Now, about oral sex, again, it's what's constant. What is comfortable for you too. I have to stress. Oral sex is good when it is enjoyed by both and it is accepted by both and the boundaries have been set by both. Ooh. Having said that, if you have a partner that trust is a, a big issue, please listen to me. If you have a partner that infidelity has been an issue and you've forgiven each other, forgiveness does not cure STD. Amen. 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 It, does not cure, <laughs> it does not cure STD, which means even though you've forgiven each other, the penis in the mouth could introduce mouth trash or our HPV. So again, even when the Bible does not go intricately, Lord logic and common sense dictates that there are some boundaries you need to set so that both of you are safe in that period until tests come back negative and yeah and do test i beg of you if, if there's been infidelity infidelity or there's a guess that that might be wrong having said that i personally i don't i don't I, again i'm not dictating what should go on in your in your in your bedroom as to what's acceptable between two as long as there is content there's communication and awareness of consequences mm -hmm. content communication and consequences then anything is permissible the bible says that all things are lawful which means you can do anything but not all things are good for you choose what is good for your relationship Let and your man. i always someone said about being a beast in the bed i always say i am sexy and holy and you can be both Okay, you can be you can be a beast in your bedroom with your man. Why why would I leave him to go go meet? No 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 no. I'm hot on my heels and I still speak in tongues. And nothing's going to change that. So I yeah. think we need to understand that you know because I've heard a lot of. I know Chineno is very funny, but she said a lot of. Uh, when you told him that you were holy, I married as a virgin. But my dear, I waited 27 years to get married. So when I got married, it was time mm -hmm. to explore that continent. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I read every mm -hmm. book. I wanted to do everything I'd heard of it because I am legally, I have a certificate that permits me to do so. And it's no one's business what I do in this room. So I think it's important to understand that sex is good in itself. It is the perversions that make it wrong. I have other views about toys, about, um, you know, I've been called on shows like this. We have about toys. We can talk about another time. topic. Yeah. Sex I toys will be another topic. That you can talk about. But consequences, communication, and constant. But wait, so just a quick one. Is it okay to watch porn, to learn? Mm. Okay. So, so wait, 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 wait
I love, you know, I love Yuri. You can, you know, when she doesn't agree, you know, the moment she said in our sex, she did like this. She was just mm. before you even nah. came, I love her because what she, what she likes to like, what she doesn't like, she doesn't mean words. Okay, yeah, so for me, for me and porn, this is how I explain again when I can't get your attention biblically i'll get your attention medically so from the psychological point of view what we view goes into the subconscious and it is on replay let me repeat from a psychological point of view what you view you cannot undo mm -hmm. what you see goes to the subconscious which is your soul room the soul is the soul is the place of emotion will ambition is the place is the cpu of the body it's the computer it just replaced so even when you don't want to view what you have viewed before it plays out by itself without your permission okay mm -hmm. what happens with porn is that when you expose yourself to porn you are inviting the third party i talked about in the beginning which means you're watching other people instead of learning from each other's bodies animals don't watch tv and they do it very well mm -hmm. animals don't wow. watch tv so i don't think you need the way god has created your body soul and spirit the you know the psychology shows that we only use maybe two percent of our brains if you engage your brain you know brain is the most active organ in sex not the hands and not the penis it is the brain once you activate your brain you can do and undo you don't need to watch anybody to teach you because the problem with yeah. with porn is that and i think jude tried to mention it is that it is a reckless thing that cannot be tamed and i liked it when he said something like, that it leads you to a place of no return when you watch porn addiction is not something you do addiction is something that becomes you what happens with porn is that you watch it you don't get enough that woman doesn't satisfy you anymore that i had to counsel a young girl who who got married and just her guy wasn't doing it so porn was doing it for her the problem with that now was that she wasn't getting satisfaction in the place where god had placed her into you introduce a third realm into that marriage you get less satisfaction you, you you're breaking covenant with that man that you have vowed to for better or for worse if things are not working he's not getting an erection talk to him about it and jude mentioned that as well we talk he kept saying it here and i like what he said we talk talk to him because sex is not all about bang one bam thank you ma'am you guys need okay. to be talking join for example so how yes. would you if you if you if you're new if we're doing all this bed on the foul business that chinelo is not yes. is very much against right you're you're new into a marriage so how do you learn how to give a blow job if you can't watch porn for example because okay. the, does the bible say does because the bible say anything about technique. watching porn sorry i get you this is mm -hmm. that's where you teach technique and all of that uh, personally yeah. i personally honestly i am the bible says you should guard your heart for that's where the issues of, of life come from i also believe in guarding your ears and your eyes for those are the gates to your the entry gates to your soul i really really am particular about what we take and that's the problem with the 21st century so much social media so how much information comes to your whatsapp for instance maybe that depresses you we just get so much information and sometimes we don't need to learn all these things that we learn a blue job is something both of you can talk about i told you when i got married i got a, i got married as virgin listen to me and i cannot sit here like dudes and say i've not tried all kinds of things why because i decided now in my marriage uh hey, hey, this holy mm -hmm. girl is about to get happy amen so i'm going amen. to get the information i can get books that i can get educate yourself from uh i think i think we need to educate ourselves from a more beneficial perspective not a damaging perspective so there's nothing wrong with maybe listening to like a sex therapist or something mm -hmm. that uh, engages you books. as opposed to porn and yeah. yeah, engages you because you don't know it all and you won't read it all and yeah. help and both of you talk both yeah. of you, like chinelo said so that he doesn't get the wrong in, from in, impression that you learned it, especially when you know you married a bed hey, hey. so, 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 yeah. so is it okay to to read books but not watch it i think again again as i said your information should be constructive not destructive if the information you're watching is maybe like an educational show say for, for instance saying education sex education we all went through it in school did it damage you for life no because there was a benefit to it yeah. that's what i'm saying so whatever you watch because i can't put a peg on what people watch okay mm -hmm. so if there is something you need to watch make sure it is constructive and not destructive make sure it's not something that goes into the soul realm and continues in replay make sure it's not watching people you know i've seen all kinds of things where people show you how to feel a banana and it was just erotic and awful you know and all of that and that's not what you need what you need is maybe the information because you know we girls have to be careful so that we are not biting what we're not meant to bite amen the man on the platform mm -hmm. and he knows you know so yeah so so just just make sure that you're, you know, I've treated a girl who came in before and she, she had fellatio and I didn't realize that oral sex was called fellatio medically. 
and her mouth, her jaw had been so extended that we had to do traction. So I've seen all kinds of things. Maybe that's why I talk the way I do. Yeah. And we had to bring the jaw back because her technique for oral sex, I feel like I'm teaching oral sex, but her technique for oral sex was wrong. Okay, the way her mouth was shaped and the process in which she was doing it, so her jaw locked. So what wow. was the technique she was using? Can you? I, 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 I yeah. know what the way from <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah, what I'm saying is, ah. what I'm saying is that that's why information should be constructed. So when you come on a platform like this, and someone we are saying to you that okay, there's a way to do it so that you don't hurt the guy, you don't bite him, um, you bring pressure instead of um you know causing pain because if your hands are rough or not oiled or not you know whatever i feel like i'm teaching i really shouldn't be teaching you will cause more harm than good um and all of that but having said that constant communication and, and consequences consequences okay. are if you do the wrong thing or if that's what you whatever you could have traction to your jaws that you need to go to like jude said you, you end up in hospital okay. so it's important to get the right information all right thank you Tony. Chinelo, i'm going to come to you real quick before we round up so Chinelo, you mentioned something earlier and you said you can do anything with your boyfriend, but not with your husband. Me, I'm still trying to, I'm struggling to understand that. So now, for example, in this world where it's a very small world, people meet people, people, know, guys know themselves. So let's assume that your husband is in a party or somewhere and you're not there and they're just talking and your husband talks about you, oh yeah, that I'm, you know, my wife and whatnot. And maybe shows the, his friends, his, your picture. And maybe somebody says, oh, I know her now. Me and this girl, we date maybe like seven years ago. Oh boy, the girl bad. Oh, she did enjoy. We did enjoy now. And your husband is like, no, enjoy waiting. Ah, this girl, they give him. But your husband cannot understand what he's saying because you are a holy Mary in bed. Whereas when you were with he, the guy, the boyfriend, you were, you know, you were something else. So how, how would you, do you reconcile that? Because I would like to think that you should be everything to your husband and not to your boyfriend. So what do you what do you think about that? How do you want your husband to react when he knows that you've been giving it large before and now you're trying to be holier um, than thou? Okay, to make things clear, you know, um, I'm not going to have a husband and a boyfriend at the same time. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking so about if. Well, hold on, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Now, if I've had a boyfriend and I've done a lot of exploring and mm -hmm. lots of experiments, yeah. And we ended that and I moved on to another thing. Yeah. I mean, that husband that will go about discussing about our lives, just like Tony said, the marriage is between the two of us. So if a husband should go out there and be discussing about our sex life with his friends, then whatever he gets, he takes it. And okay. that's his problem to okay, do. Okay, Chilelo, I didn't say I didn't say the husband will go and discuss. I just said the husband okay. meets a friend, right? A guy yeah. which happens to be the person you dated before. And you know sometimes, okay. oh, you don't marry. Yes, I'm married. I have two children. Oh, here's the picture of my family. And the, your husband shows his friend, oh yeah, this is my wife and my children. And the husband, your husband's friend say, oh, that now that woman, oh, I know her now. I'm having a chichi chinelo. Oh, me and her, we dated like 10 years ago, boy. The girl is so good in bed and blah, blah, blah. And the guy is the one that starts to talk about how good you are in bed. And your husband is shocked, like, really? This is somebody that cannot even give me a blowjob and you're saying she's good in bed. That's what I'm talking about because I think... Well, that well, um, I'll still give the same answer. You have no right as, your, as a husband or as a wife to go out there and discuss about whatever you do in your bedroom with, the, with, with any party because that is like bringing a third person into the well, marriage. Your husband didn't matter? discuss no, the, your, my husband should be able to cut that person short because you don't know right. the person's motives or intentions okay. for saying whatever they say. So if you want to go out there as my husband and you're going there to discuss about the sex that with the boyfriend, then whatever you get, you take. That's, that's what I'm saying. But the thing is, I had some things that I wanted to address, uh, you know, that Tony said, which mm. please give me the opportunity to do yes. that. And one, yes. of, one of them is that um, uh, about learning something, you know, Tony mentioned about learning and that whatever you, your eyes see, you know, you internalize it and mm. it's difficult. But I can tell you, I did a bit of psychology myself and I know that you can unlearn, you can unlearn what you have learned. And another thing is that there are different ways by which you can learn. You can learn through, through visual, like 
things you see. Mm -hmm. You can learn through reading. So if you just limit yourself to learning through reading, that means your brain is going to be playing a lot of tricks on you, trying to imagine what you have read. Now, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the porn, yeah? When it comes to porn, some people can watch it because maybe they are struggling in their sex life and they want to, and maybe they both agree. Let us look at how other people are doing this. Yeah. I mean, there are so many kinds of porn. There mm -hmm. are so many kinds, so many different types out there. The, the, I'm not saying anyone is good. I'm a, I'm a Christian, by the way, so don't think I'm a very bad person. Now, at the end of the day, I know that there are so many kinds of porn. There are ones that can be educative, if you look at it from that aspect. Okay. That it is educative in the sense that, okay, I, I, did, I didn't do nothing, but I'm just saying for somebody who did nothing, and you, uh, who is doing nothing, and you're going for a placement, you're going there, you're being taught how these things are done. You can take it as a learning process of okay let's look at a bit of how people do this you can select the ones that you want to look at and when you look at it and you've learned something from it i'm not saying because we can get addicted to anything many people get addicted to drinking coke i drink coke but i'm not addicted to it i can stay a whole year without drinking it so the same thing goes with any other thing if you try to make it an addiction it becomes an addiction but if you don't another thing again is that we have to know that we are all different um in, we are individuals, we are different people. So the way our mental health is, is different. Some people can tolerate, have a long span of tolerance in the sense that when they see something, they can, you know, they can just pick out the good ones and leave the bad ones. While some people get it in place. So at the end of the day, I believe that if okay. people, because it is not a sin at the end of the day, if sex, if the Bible doesn't say anything about sex, it's not a sin to watch porn, provided you're watching it healthily and you want to learn something from it at the end of the day. Not thank that you're you. doing it because you want to satisfy yourself or, you know. Okay, thank you. Before I round up, just quick question, um, Toyin. So is it okay to watch soft porn or maybe, as Gina Lo has just rightly said, so because you want to learn something from it, is it okay to watch that but in a, if you're not addicted to it, is it okay or it's totally a no-no? I'll be very honest with you. I talked about inviting a third party into mm -hmm. sexual relationships. The, the, I don't see the difference scripturally, psychologically, sexually in watching. But the person and, is not physically there and there's no touching. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I don't see the difference in the, in the, in, in the effects it has on you. Remember, mm -hmm. I said the brain is the most active sexual organ, yeah. okay, in sex. It's, not, it's what you imagine and what you do. Now, I said, I also made a statement that animals don't watch porn. They don't watch TV. Yet we learned the doggy style from dogs, right? Am I, am I, is the impression right? That the doggy style yeah. is actually named after a dog. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So if we're learning from animals, doesn't that tell you something? The mm -hmm. way God created the human body, body, soul, and spirit, you underestimate, maybe because we women don't really, I, I, the way visuals affect us is so different from the way it affects men. And that's why I went back to what Jude said, that it is the, the, the erraticness of fantasy that pushes you. He didn't say porn was the first point of contact. He said it is that fantasy that pushes you to pick something you would not have otherwise. Why do you have a partner to practice with at home and to, to talk to at home and with all the information you've received to practice? Go and look at two other people. Remember, number one, these two people are paid to do what they do. Number two, their erections are fake. They are on medication and they are caught, shot, caught again, filmed again. There's no, it is totally unnatural. For porn is unnatural. And go and I've watched, you know, I watch videos of people who became born again when they left porn, the porn industry. And the damage on their psyche, sleeping with other people, being involved in watching it to be able to recreate the scenario is serious. Just because you think you can, I, I understand what you is trying to say, but we all unlearn things. When things are in your subconscious, when they've gone to your soul realm, it is not just unlearn. It is input is equal to output. You begin to become that which you feed on. That's what I'm trying to say to you. So the after, the consequences of watching these things outweigh the advantages. If we can learn from an animal, you don't, you just need to engage your brain. If you need, and I did not say don't watch. You remember when you asked me, Sissy, you said, okay, that 
doesn't mean we cannot watch. I'm saying porn is a no, no, but I'm saying information. I said information that you watch must be constructive. And I asked you all, did sex education in school damage you? You said no. Which means there is information out there that are within boundaries that can teach you what's safe for you. We've talked about education so much on here, so we cannot live here as novices. We need to understand that education is, in, is information for power to be able to help you do what you're meant to do right. Porn okay. is not education. I repeat, it is bad entertainment. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Toyin. Chino, you know, I saw you shaking your head. You know, I'm going to give you just 30 seconds quickly because we need to round up. Do you have anything to say to what Toyin has just said? I'm going to maintain what I said earlier that mm -hmm. uh, education is education, no matter from what angle or from what aspect it, co it comes from. It doesn't really matter. If some people believe that they are struggling in their sexual relationship and that a bit of porn, soft porn or whatever kind of, you know, the ones, because not all of them are fake. There are all these um, amateur ones. What do you like call them? Like Kardashian amateur? and that guy. Yeah, online. yeah. You see all these, you see all, you, even I'm there are some people too. can watch that have some, you know, bits of porn in them. <laughs> so if you think that is going to help your sexual relationship with your partner, so what just a bit of it, it's not like you're making it, um, uh, it's something that you do all the time. Well, I still believe it's a form of education for some people who are more visual than trying okay. to read and then and allow this country where we are in, we believe in practice, practical. You learn, most people learn things through practice. So at the end of the day, if I'm saying about reading book and then I sit down in my room and start imagining when I can just click something and see it myself, then well, that's the way you want to learn. I mm -hmm. have my own way that I want to learn and it's not good for us to condemn mm -hmm. the ways that people choose to learn. It just depends on how you learn it and how even the, the type of education, um, sorry, the type of reading books and all that that you think is healthy, some aspects of reading are healthy to you as a person, to your psyche as well. So it is not all mm -hmm. reading that makes someone good or makes what you're doing good or makes it not bad. There are so many people who have read so many things that they've internalized and is affecting them in their lives. Like the seven book of Moses, right? Yeah. Okay. And so many other ones as well. <laughs> okay. There's satanic verses. Okay. Toying, quick one. Quick one, Toying. Is it okay to masturbate if you are single? Yes or no? That's all I want. Yes or no? It's not okay to masturbate, period, and I would go, I would tell you why. We are, we've been given, yeah, just because something is secularly acceptable, CC, does not mean I'm going to go against what I firmly believe in. Oh, yeah, because yeah, that's I fine. know that, yeah, so, so just because it's secularly acceptable, and I, again, just go, go back on what was said, I repeat myself that information can be virtual, can be visual, and can be reading. It's not just reading. I, I think I stressed that enough, so I just yeah. needed to say that again. Okay. It's, it's not just, I'm not talking about reading. Anyway, going back to masturbation. 20 now, this seconds. Is what masturbation this is what masturbation again i would go back to maybe experiences of counseling people listening to the information that it has now whilst young men are told masturbate it helps your release if you don't release you know you would pile up and and that's all fake your body is is organized in such a way that your body gets rid of that which your body is a machine and unless you understand your body you are you know anything that's not well understood is well on its way to being abused okay, okay. so right. understanding is what helps you probably put boundaries in place not okay. masturbating all your life as a young and i'm saying to young man we have young women that also masturbate but let me tell you from a value perspective what masturbation does at the end of at the end of the day masturbation is self-pleasure that's not what sex was created for sex okay. was communication communion so it's for creation so when you masturbate you're used to masturbating it's self-pleasure it's just you by yourself as much as again the bible is silent on it like it's silent about smoking does not make it good no that is where i'm able to convince you with psychological or medical um, feature okay. or literature now and it has also showed that when you masturbate usually especially from a value per perspective there is a lot of guilt and shame associated with it that is not easily gotten rid of ask people who do it they'll tell you they'll tell you that it's not the way they want to feel after it really doesn't give you the release you were looking for if okay. sex was designed to be between two people so masturbation no and that no. is why people if when couples even have to go through like things like IVF and it's just trauma for those guys genuinely they're like yeah. I'm used to doing this with my wife to produce a semen culture to uh, talk to people and uh, uh, people who are going through IVF and their husbands have to do that it is not fun he doesn't go to have fun in the in the toilet next door 
just because he has to pass pass um, a sample. No, no. So okay. let's get it right. From a okay. value perspective, so guilt, shame, and sex was not designed for your body alone. You know? Okay, thank you very much. I think we're going to end it. Seriously, this, this has been a very interesting one. Thank you, Toin, Jude, Chinelo. Thank you all for coming back on the show. I mean, we can continue to talk and talk and mm -hmm. talk. So mm -hmm. maybe we might want to do something else on this topic. Who knows? But yeah. anyway, on that note, we're going to leave it here. And again, we're live 9.30 a.m. every Saturday, Nigerian and UK time on our YouTube channel. And um, so if, you're, if you haven't um, followed us, please do so. Subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. And it's been a lovely show. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.